Oh, happy Wednesday, everyone. It is so great to be here today in the studio for Daytime Toronto. We have an amazing day lined up. My name is Nicole Stamp. I'm hosting here all week and I'm super happy to be here. Let me tell you about what is happening today to make this a wonderful Wednesday. First of all, we're going to talk about addictions and the stigma that surrounds them with Dr. Vera Tarman. She specializes in addictions and we're going to talk about how we can lessen the stigma, which allows people to be more open and to maybe seek a more effective treatment. Sounds pretty good. Then we're going to head into the kitchen, my favorite room in any building, with Barb Holland from Foodland Ontario. She is whipping up, get this, meatloaf muffins. Stop it. I'm going to eat them all. Also, Dorian Kalinas from Moksha Yoga Don Mills is here to chat with us about the Speak Your Peace campaign, which is a campaign that aims to get students to increase their definition of peace. And I think we're going to do a little bit of yoga while we're at it. Good way to wake up in the morning. And some practical ways we can reduce the burden of chronic illness, speaking to pharmacist Raheem Ismail about how Canadians can, can uh, coincide with their pharmacist to help uh, to manage chronic conditions. And then we're going to talk about choosing the right technology for studying with organizational expert Claire Kumar, which is great. She's going to talk about tablets and apps that anybody can utilize to make sure that they are helping themselves with the best possible time management and efficiency. Now, before we get into the studio for all of that today, we're going to have an amazing talk on the phone with uh, Brian Clark, who's the publisher and GM from Snap North York. Now, Brian has his photographers out all over the GTA, photographing whatever is going on in North York, and uh, he's going to be on the phone with us in just a second. So what is that? A beautiful Wednesday or a beautiful Wednesday? Brian, are you there? I am, Nicole. How are you today? Oh, I'm so great. How are you? I'm doing excellent. It's just a beautiful day out there. I'm just ecstatic that we're going to have another day of sunshine. Me too. Are you going to maybe hit up a patio this afternoon and soak oh, up some rays? I don't, I don't know about that. I'm a little busy. I've got a lot of events coming up over the next few days, but uh, we're definitely going to get out in the sunshine and get some great pictures. Love it. All right, now let's talk about what's going on in the city. If I were to say uh, the following words to you, you tell me what you would tell me. North York Senior Center Open House. Go. Oh, boy. Tomorrow, tomorrow at 10 a.m., the doors open at the North York Senior Center's Open House. It's a multicultural active living fair. Uh, basically, they're, they're uh, celebrating their multicultural community, and they're offering free tours of the active living facility, seminars, consultations, and demonstrations with more than 50 exhibitors. Uh, there's going to be refreshments, door prizes, and if you show up for this, you can get a membership discount for the year. Everyone is welcome, and, and come on down and get informed. You've got York West MPP, the Honorable Mario Sergio, Minister, Minister Responsible for Seniors, and he'll be there at 12 noon to talk to the people. Oh, that sounds great. All right, so people should head on out and check that out. Now, how about Dog Sense? Eighth anniversary oh celebration? Eighth, Give it to me. Eighth year, yeah. The, the, the becoming a staple in the community. Um, Dog Sense Daycare is just a wonderful uh, partner of ours, and they're inviting everybody to join them for a fun-filled afternoon with a variety of festivities and refreshments. There'll be games, tours of the facility, again, prize draws, and the picnic is canine-themed, which always makes, you know, it's great for the furry friends as well as the owners. Uh, they get a real kick out of it. Your dog socializes. You know, dog, dog Sense Daycare looks after between 15 and 20 dogs each day uh, for daycare. And they also supply pickup and delivery in the area, which is, which is an awesome extra. Oh, that's great. When you say pickup and delivery, what do you mean? Meaning if you uh, board your dog there, they'll come and pick him up in the morning and drop him off when you get home from work. Wow. That's great. I love that. In this pick, that little schnauzer in the front, and the little, what, is, what do you think that one is in the back, the gray one? Yeah, I'm telling you, you will find some amazing dogs that go there, and, and there's amazing dogs all over the, the North York area, and we love animals. We just love to put them in our paper. So yeah, well, this will I mean, be a they're, great event. They're the cutest photo subject you could possibly get. I guess maybe second only to babies, between dogs second and babies. Second is, is dogs, <laughs> yes. And, and the younger, the better. The puppies are even cuter. Do you have any tips for people who own pets and who want to take good photos of their pets? Uh, basically, uh, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> tips, just, just a wish for sanity. Up and keep clicking. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right, so what about uh, the Budokai Judo Club's one-year anniversary? Yeah, Budokai uh, Judo Club's one-year anniversary is coming up this Saturday. It's at 1110 Finch Avenue West, Unit 5, from 2 to 4 p.m. And uh, Budokai is a, a martial arts club. that um, Basically, they're bringing in a new kinder judo. They're, uh, they're announcing a new kinder judo for younger kids, as well as they're bringing in a Brazilian jiu-jitsu 
uh, for kids and adults, a new program. And it's just a, a, a great, great uh, um, organization. Rick and Ray uh, look after it, and, you know, they've been around for a full year now. Between uh, the teachers, between them all, is about 120 years of teaching and training and competitive experience. So you're definitely uh, um, under the right wing. Um, you, you can try a, a free three-week session. Um, you can sign up for it. it it's held at the uh, Akaido Club, again, at 1110 Finch Avenue West, uh, Unit 5. Great. The nice thing I think about judo and aikido is that they're they're sort of they're martial arts that allow you to, rather than being sort of aggressive against your opponent, you I think you use their moves and you transmit the energy, and so that you're sort of using their own attacks against them. So there's exactly. a nice sort of like a fluid feeling. I like that. It, I, it is, and you know it's it's still an Olympic sport as well, which you know it's uh, it's it's a clean sport and it's it's healthy for the kids, and it not only provides a, a great uh, training for martial arts. But it's also perfect for intense physical and mental and spiritual training, um, and and it's just I recommend it for any of the uh, parents who are looking for something for their kids to get into for the fall. Yeah, it's so great for kids. It builds their self-esteem. It keeps them fit. You can't lose. Exactly, it's a win-win situation for everybody with that. Awesome, Brian. Now let's talk about the events that you want to showcase for October. What do you have coming oh, up? There's, I know we have the that, Johnny Bauer event. He's showing yeah, up. Sign autographs. Coming up, it's past. Yeah, Johnny was at the. Uh, uh, with the Toronto Plaza Hotel um, last month, we we snapped him signing uh, shirts and pucks and hats and oh, he's just an amazing guy. It's the second time I've met him, but I really got a, a chance to speak with him um, last week, and, and we just had a ball. He just had a ball signing stuff, and you know if you missed out on something like that, it's it's West To Card Show, and they're having another show on October sixth. And they're giving away a, a, a raffling off a Gretzky rookie card. So oh, wow. anybody that's into the sports and entertainment, memorabilia and nostalgia, you got to check out this show. It's one of the best in the city. Definitely. And to, to find that, where's the information? Is it online somewhere? Oh, yeah. You can just go to our website, snapnorthyork.com. We've got a calendar of all the events coming up. And you can go onto the calendar page and check out everything that's coming up in, um, in North York that, that people have entered into our calendar. That sounds great. All right. Now I want to talk about... Football frost frenzy. As the fall hits, I'm saying a lot of words oh. that begin with an F here. Uh, it's getting very alliterative. But as the fall hits, I just I want to get back on the football field. I play I oh. play uh, a little bit of flag football. And uh, tell us about this frost frenzy. Good for you. Well, you got to check out York's <laughs> new field. They oh, yeah. just had it uh, redone. Yeah, and uh, they they christened it uh, in style last week as they defeated the Wolford Laurier Golden Hawks 33 to 20. More than 2,000 fans came out. Uh, it was it was just amazing downpour of rain. I don't know if you remember last Saturday, but it just continually downpoured rain through the entire game. And these fans just oh, they had a, an awesome time. It was it was just unbelievable. And and uh, you know, New York uh, they haven't had the strongest football team in the past, but they've really come around this year. And, and as I said, with a new field and a new team, I think they're going to have an amazing year. You know what they say, Brian? Passion is waterproof. Yeah, this is true, and so is school spirit. Absolutely. Yeah. Brian, thank you so yeah. much for calling in. It's been great talking to you. Everybody at home, if you want more information, check out www.snapnorthyork.com. After the break, some great content right here in Daytime Toronto. Don't move a muscle, because we'll be right back. lucky today to be joined by Dr. Vera Talman. She is the medical director of Renaissance. Vera, thank you so much for joining us. It's yeah. great to have you here. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm, I was looking forward to coming. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. Well, tell me about Renaissance. What does your organization do exactly? Well, it's a, it's a uh, treatment center uh, complex in Toronto. It's, it's lar the largest one in uh, Canada, actually. And we have two houses for men and, and one house for a woman. And there are 28, 21-day programs for people who are coming uh, uh, to, to either stop alcohol or cocaine or some drug like that. 
That's great. And yeah. what, so, what sort of approach do you take in, in dealing with people and helping to manage their addictions? Um, it's a really, that's a really good question because in uh, addiction medicine there's a whole range of approaches from what's called harm reduction which is we well, don't really try to fix the addiction, you just make the harm less, mm -hmm. or to, to abstinence and we are on the abstinence end of the spectrum. We're, we're actually one of the only ones left that are. So when people come in we try to teach them how to get sober and stay sober. That's great. And what kind of strategies do you encourage people to employ? Uh, well, we give them uh, um, lots of, uh, uh, first of all, we get them sober, that's the, that's the main thing. And then uh, what we do predominantly is we introduce them to a 12-step program because the idea about going into treatment is it's just the beginning of a new life. And it's the beginning of a joyful life, not a negative life, but you can't, you can't do it alone. And so we introduce a 12-step program and other, other uh, uh, supports. The person can leave moving into something that's positive. It's actually really nice to hear you say that because I think a lot of the discussion around addictions is about, uh, you know, how difficult it can be and how challenging it can be. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't really necessarily, when I think about addictions, think about the joyful aspect of being able to overcome an addiction and move forward in your mm -hmm. life. So it's interesting to... Yeah. to frame it that yeah, way. There's actually a lot of people who when they're in recovery will say I'm a grateful alcoholic or I'm a grateful addict because they found a, a sense of joy that they've never had in their life. Um, for, for whatever reason um, people uh, come into addiction and when we think about addiction it tends to be a very stigmatic approach even as an addiction doctor in terms of the status of medical I'm at the bottom of the heap because I work in addictions. Uh, it, the, the stigma is so low with addiction. Um, but uh, one of the things that we uh, uh, really try to promote is um, once you get past that, because if you have that stigma, people who would otherwise have an addiction are, are, are not going to want to acknowledge it because it's acknowledging that you're, you know, the guy on the, on the, on the dark corner that can't do anything. But in fact, there's many functional addicts that are, not, are missing the boat of, of, of uh, being able to clean up and, and basically live a joyful life. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's really interesting. It didn't really occur to me that part of the stigma is about the emotion that we attach to it. I was mm -hmm. sort of thinking of it more in a factual way, but to think that all of the conversation around addictions is, is always focused on the negative and is also mm -hmm. always in a negative tone, that would definitely make a difference. Yes, and, and a lot of people might think, you know, and, and one of the things that I'm really <clears throat> on about is food addiction. A lot of people might think, yeah, maybe I'm a little bit addicted to this, but th then they think, well, what does that mean? I have to say I'm an addict? No. Uh, and, and then what does that mean? Do I have to stop? What, what kind of life is that like? But if we have a view of recovery as actually a positive place to go to, a person might actually think, you know what, maybe there's something beyond this misery, which is not that bad, but it's not as good as it could be. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. So further to that, you just celebrated, I know, Recovery Day yes. earlier this month. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, on September 8th, uh, which was uh, one or two Sundays ago, um, we had our first Toronto uh, Recovery Day. Uh, it started last year in BC and it's been going on in the States for a while. And we thought it's time that we celebrate recovery. So first of all, acknowledge that addiction ex exists and that there's actually a joyful place. So it was, uh, it was held in Allen Gardens this year. We had uh, um, a number of politicians come by to speak, uh, to sort of commemorate the day and we had you know face painting we had a lot of sort of fun things uh, for people to uh, uh, first of all come out acknowledge themselves and also celebrate that's great yeah, it's actually a celebration hearing you say come out is interesting too because I feel like one of the great mm -hmm. things that I really like about living in this particular decade I think is how uh, there's a real movement I think towards people being authentic about who they actually are whether yeah. that's coming out about their sexuality coming out about you know any parts of their lifestyle that maybe in previous decades would have been kept hidden exactly. and so the idea of, of drawing addiction into that that sort of more open framework where you're just embracing who you are that's right and what makes you as a person I yes. think is really great yes and you see and in, in, in that concept of coming out you can watch a lot of TV shows like intervention and all sorts of shows, but they tend to focus on the negative, like the horrible yeah. stuff that families, uh, uh, you know, get get re you know, cumbered with their addict child or whatever. Um, and and we want to take the focus away from that to to um, addiction is a big field. Let's look at the positive stuff. What's it like to put down cigarettes and not have to smoke anymore? Yeah. What's it like to uh, not have to wake up in the morning and and be obsessed about food? What's it like to not have to have a drink again if that's if that's what your uh, your addiction is? Actually, you know, it's, it's a good place, and we don't hear enough about that. Yeah, sure. I mean, I guess in terms of the media, it's easier to make drama out of the idea that Absolutely. someone's family's having a terrible time. Yes. And then there's not as much drama when you say, well, I, I'm now, like, you know, fully into my recovery, yeah. and my life is actually really solid. Yeah, it's exactly. like, where's the drama and how solid and wonderful your life yeah. is? And, and, and the, the danger about that is, is then people, um, when they uh, do recover, if they don't have somewhere to go, what happens? You end up going back to what you know, yeah. the familiar, and so you get this huge relapse rate.
Um, so that's a, one of the things about um, the uh, recovery day that we wanted to really focus on. And then if I can mention the magazine. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, uh, we have a magazine. Uh, uh, it's not my magazine, but I'm part of it. It's called Recovery Wire. Mm -hmm. And it, too, is an attempt to celebrate um, recovery. So it's just for uh, re recovering addicts or anybody who might be interested, looking at some of the joyful things, how to live in recovery in a positive way. Great. Yeah. Now, for people who are interested in sort of finding uh, resources, do you have mm -hmm. some, some places that they can go to get resources if they or a loved one maybe has an addiction uh, uh, issue? Um, yes. Well, I mean, you can look on my website. So my website is addictionsunplugged.com. Okay. Um, if you want to find out about the magazine, it's just uh, recoverywire.com. Um, uh, and, uh, and if you actually want to get resources for addiction, medicine, uh, or, 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 or help, um, you can call Renaissance, you can call, um, uh, there's a... a Dart is a is a is a referral service. Is another one called Metro Addiction Mars. It's called. I can't remember right offhand. But I mean, there are places that you can look Great. up. Great. And yeah. you have a talk coming up. Let's talk about that yes, briefly. Yes. Yes. Um, on uh, on uh, November the. I better look at look at it here. Um, where is it? No, November <laughs> the twenty third. On November the twenty third. Um, on a Saturday morning. Um, or Saturday whole day. I have a, a talk on food addiction in the morning. And uh, you know, here's an example of how people don't want to acknowledge that it might be an addiction because it has a bad name. Um, when in fact it's it's a struggle that a lot of people live with. Uh, and you could get out of the cloud of that if we didn't have the cloud of shame around addiction. So my talk um, is, is, is to address food addiction, and then in the afternoon I'm talking about the biology of spirituality, because you want to replace it with something. Great. Yeah. That's great. I love that you have uh, the talk about addiction and the talk about what can come after that and yeah. the feeling of joy that can come. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's yes. been wonderful talking to yes, you. Yes, thank you very much. Great. Thanks, Vera. Okay. All right. Now, coming up next, we are going to head into the kitchen and whip up some delicious meatloaf muffins with Barb Holland from Foodline Ontario, right after this, right here on Daytime. Kitchen, the hearts of any home, the heart of any studio. I've got a big bowl of ground beef in front of me, and I have home economist from Foodland, Ontario, Barb Holland, here with me. How's it going, Barb? Great, Nicole. Great. Nice to see you. You too. Thanks for coming back on the show. Oh, thank you. So I'm really happy about this bowl of ground beef, because <laughs> if there's one thing I love in life, it's beef might be it. Oh, really? I eat a lot of beef. I love oh, it. Oh, okay. Good for you. Yeah. Well, I've got two recipes. One's vegetarian and one's not vegetarian, so okay. we're trying to cover everyone off. I love it. And it's they're both kid-friendly, you know, easy to do. Back, everyone's back to school, back to routine and all that so get started by this is a southwest stuffed sweet potato and first start by cooking sweet potatoes mm -hmm. um, I found for this particular recipe if you cut them in half brush them with a little bit of oil and then place them cut side down on a parchment paper and then bake them and the purpose of cutting them in half reduces the cooking time considerably okay so put it in a 375 degree oven for about 35 to 45 minutes until you can tell that they're tender okay Great. take them out we've done that the idea is that there's four of them i've just shown you two but mm -hmm. there's four so that there's four servings here and okay. each person gets two and not particularly big sweet potatoes maybe about 12 ounces just an average size sweet potato surprisingly um, people don't realize that we grow so many in ontario they're a, a vegetable that grows in every country around the world. Really? They don't like frost, so, you know, we are experiencing some frost soon, or might do. But no, they're grown here, and they're an, a nutritional powerhouse. Oh, they sure are, yeah. What are they? They're full of beta carotene. There's some fiber in there, some vitamin A, probably. Absolutely. And actually, you write about the vitamin A or beta carotene. It's You get, in one serving, 
four times your daily amount. Really? And they're, they're very versatile. There's so many ways to cook it. But so once you've done this, cool them a little bit, and then you scrape out the filling. Okay. Scrape out the whatever. And you can tell by the bright color. That's why they're so great in vitamin A. So I'm just going to put that aside. All right. And what's going in here is um, some black beans. Mm-hmm some corn. Now corn is still around in Ontario. You can find it and this is such a wonderful time of the year because whether you're in the grocery store, whether you're at the farmers market or a farm stand, um, you can find all sorts of it's just the best time of year. Uh, the harvest is all in. Yeah. So this was some corn that I did grill just the other night okay. so it's some leftover. It's oh, cooked. See those little brown spots from the grill? From the grill. Delicious. This is roasted red pepper. Now you can roast it yourself or buy it in the jar. I have brought um, a basket of vegetables along. There's some lovely red and yellow shepherd uh, peppers there. Shepherds are really nice, long, sweet mm -hmm. um, field. Yeah, very nice. Those are delicious. One of my favorites. And they're the ones that when you, you know, you, a lot of, um, you see a lot of Italian families roasting peppers. That's the one they use. You see them in bushels. They oh. buy them in bushels. Roast them whole, let them, you know, you let them steam a little bit, and then you take off the skin. And they're called shepherd peppers? Shepherd peppers. Shepherd peppers. I like it with there the There you twisters. go. And there's lots of peppers, too. That's another thing that we're growing a great deal of in Ontario is different types. You can find jalapeno and cherries and habaneros and all of those that are people want, you know, spicier types of peppers. That's great. I love that we're talking about local produce, too. It's so great for the environment to be buying local. The food is fresher. It comes to you quicker. I'm all about it. Yeah, absolutely. And helping, you know, our economy. It's the second largest economy in the province of Ontario. There's a lot of people that are involved in the food industry from growing it all the way to us at the very bottom of the food chain when we're actually eating. So right. I also had some green onions. This is some cumin to okay. add some flavor, a little bit of salt and pepper. So again, the idea is to mix this up, just fold it together. Then we're going to fill the uh, sweet potato halves and put a little bit of cheese. Um, again, any type of cheese, but this happens to be a Monterey Jack uh, have. Havarti. Okay. So it's got a little bit of spice, but if you have cheddar around, that's the one thing that freezes well. And I always keep um, cheese in the freezer, grate it. Okay. Not necessarily in blocks, but if you have some, especially if you have maybe if you bought it in a little bit larger sizes or bulk, and the family is not going through it, grate it up, put it into a nice um, airtight container, and put it in the freezer. And then you can just take it out, and often you can scrape it out with a fork and use it for whatever I you're doing. Did not know that. I guess that means that from now on, I'm going to start buying those, you know, those logs of cheese they sell that are like three feet long, I'm going to start buying those. <laughs> yeah, especially as you grate it. Grate if you, that, yeah. If you um, put it in whole, um, it does tend to um, change the texture and then it'll crumble. Okay. Whereas in this case, that's what, you know, a good purpose for it. All right, stay tuned yes. for my freezer, which is going to be full of 17 <laughs> pounds of 17 pounds of cheese. <laughs> so we'll fill that. All okay, right. in the meantime, do you Great. want to start on this yes. one? Yes, okay. So this is a chipotle um, meatloaf muffin, and the okay. idea with doing it in the meatloaf, or sorry, in the um, muffin pan, is that it cuts the cooking time considerably. Oh, and it, I bet you get more end pieces too, because the bottoms and the top brown up. That's yeah. always my favorite part. Okay. The brown edges. That's a good point. Yeah. Um, but the other thing is that instead of you know taking an hour to cook, they cook in 20 to 25 minutes. Oh wow. So that's great. Great. Okay. So I've got extra lean ground beef. Okay. And you could use chicken or turkey or whatever you'd like, but the extra lean is important because um, anytime you're working with um, beef in particular and pork, there's a lot of fat. Mm -hmm. So you don't want it all swimming in this. And I'm oh, really yeah. into you know healthy stuff. Sure. So it's about a pound and a half. Okay. First step I did was I took one of those um, half a shepherd pepper and an onion, and okay. I just softened it in the microwave for about a minute. Oh, a microwave. That's clever. So you can toss Save that. Because it. because they're cooking in only 20 minutes, if you were to put them in raw, they would probably be a little too crunchy. Okay. So essentially, um, salsa. Okay. There's um, three quarters of a cup there. Mm -hmm. Pop that in. We have some cornmeal, which gives it again that sort of we're in the south southwestern sort of kick. Love it. It also helps to thicken it without using flour. Okay. We do have an egg in there. You can yes, pop that do. in. If you're Look. using chicken or turkey, because it tends to be a sticker stickier consistency, you won't need the egg. You can just use this up. Okay. Now this is chipotle. Are you familiar with Delicious. those? Delicious. Yes. I just want to show the can. There are different brands, okay. but essentially they were called chipotle peppers and adobo sauce. All right. So once you get it home, what I do is open it up, put it in a f small food processor and puree the whole thing. Because there's like little peppers that have been, um, they're 
dried and roasted, okay. and then they're put in this really spicy sauce. Okay. So what's nice is um, chipotles are smoked jalapeno, mm. so they get that smoky, yeah. but also a nice heat to it. That smells so good. So that is a favorite that in. flavor of mine. Anything with chipotle, I'm going to be happy. So once, so once I've pureed it, okay. then I put it into whatever recipe I'm doing, and then again I freeze the rest in an airtight container and pop it in the freezer. And then when I need something, I can actually break it up with a fork and put it into other things. Okay. You can use it in um, even just making a mayo with some chipotle. You oh. can put it into your, oh, it's great in chili. You know, you make yes. a big patch of yes. chili. Um, anything with burritos and all of that, you put it in. A great. little bit of salt and pepper. Yes, a pea. Now, do I have to worry about over mixing this? Is that a problem with, with this um, kind of recipe? Just so that it's nicely blended. All right. And I'm glad you're using, um, I, at home I would just get in there with my hands, but because the sink here doesn't <laughs> really work, I'm really pleased that you're doing that Hello, so name is well. Beef hands. Welcome to Roger's Shake. No? Okay, why not? <laughs> and once you get it all mixed up, again, you don't have to grease the pan because there is enough fat in it. We can pop it in there. There's a spoon Kay. there if you want. Thank you. So how full do we want these to be? It, they come up pretty full because there's quite a good mixture in there. So I'll do that while you're doing that all one. All right. And then um, it's always a good idea if when you're working with beef um, to use a thermometer. So I have brought an instant read thermometer along just to talk about that because it should reach about 170 so that they um, you know that it's nicely done but it's about 20 to 25 minutes great to know okay so we are gonna come back and yep. see these when they're all finished up in just a second we'll have more Barb right here just stay tuned are back with home economist from Foodland Ontario, Barb Holland. We are making this great looking, these meatloaf muffins. Yep. Chipotle meatloaf muffins yes. and Southwest mm -hmm. stuffed baked potatoes. Uh, yes, yeah, sweet, sweet potatoes. Potato. Yep. That's so I'm just going to cover these with a little bit of that cheese and then it goes back in the oven just for about five to ten minutes until everything is warmed back up and also you melt the cheese. Lovely. These are very colorful, kid friendly. Um, I said earlier about cooking sweet potatoes. They're so versatile. Microwave works well. You're cooking them whole. They're nice and soft because it's a um, moist cooking method. You can bake them. I cut them into wedges sometimes or slices and barbecue them and they're really good that way. Great. Now, I've just put a little glaze of salsa on these Absolutely. meatloaf muffins. Yep. Okay. About two teaspoons each, and awesome. then again, it goes into a 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes. And let's take a look at the completed, the completed plate. Look yes. at this. This looks so good. And I think kids like eating small portions. Most people do. But if you happen to have some left over, you can chop them all up. You could take them one for um, to lunch the next day, or you can put them into taco shells. Oh, that's great. Thank you so much, Barb. Thank you, It's been Nicole. so great having you on the show today. For more information and the recipe, check out www.foodlandontario.ca. The recipe will be up on our site as well. Thanks, Barb. Thank you. Now, still to come on Daytime Toronto today, Dorian Kalinas from Moksha Yoga Don Mills is going to chat with us about the Speak Your Peace campaign, and she's going to get me in touch with my inner prana doing a little bit of yoga in the studio. We're also going to talk about practical ways that we can reduce the burden of chronic illness with a pharmacist and choosing the right technology for steadying. Definitely a topic that's on a lot of people's minds. Now, recently there was a great event called Unity Day in support of the Boys and Girls Clubs of Toronto and our cameras were there. Take a look at this. Well, today is our annual Unity Day. This is our 11th one. And within our Boys and Girls Clubs, we're looking to strengthen the minds, the bodies, and the opportunities of young people. So we try to work really hard in trying to create the necessary programming that's going to make it beneficial to all. Well, Unity Day really is about breaking down those stereotypical uh, barriers that, that we all put up about various communities in Toronto. And we work in, uh, you know, in a, in a large expanse uh, uh, and different neighborhoods across Toronto. And by bringing those young people together, they realize that we're all the same. We're all dealing with the same issues and we're all here to have a good time and enjoy and grow as individuals and as a group. Um, I've been doing this for a while now. Um, I just like helping kids and just being united with all the other camps. It's been really fun. Like I like seeing everyone come together because we don't really usually see like 
the different boys and girls clubs, but it's nice to see like everyone just come together and unite, you know, Unity Day unite. Well, every year it gets it gets slightly bigger as boys and girls clubs grow their services, but really it's volunteers and corporations that come to the table. You know, we we've, we've got volunteers here today from the Rogers Youth Fund, uh, you know, and and I know that they've been a very generous donor of volunteer time and money to uh, boys and girls clubs recently with the Rogers raising the grade and those are how we expand our programs. I think there's stuff happening all over the place and it's really exciting. It's exciting that the organization has made the investment in giving people like us the opportunity to do stuff like this today. Uh, it's really cool. So I was at the crafts table uh, this morning and we're making cool things like door hangers and buttons and bracelets but it's been really cool. I've been getting to know the different kids and getting to know their names because we've been writing them down and just met a lot of great kids who have like amazing futures ahead of them. Wonderful thing about the internet you know type in boys and girls clubs and a variety of our clubs will show up. We generally have about eight clubs in the Toronto area but with our satellites Today we have about 27 different outreach locations with us today and we have over a thousand kids here at this time. are in the studio. This is Dorian Kalinas, the owner of Moksha Yoga Don Mills. Thanks for joining us, Dorian. Thank you for having me. Great to have you here. Now, you were just telling me before we started what the word yoga means. Do you want to tell the folks at home? Oh, um, yoga, loosely translated to, to yoke or to, you know, to blend. So uh, one's um, body with mind, with spirit, with breath, ourselves with the universe. Oh, I love so it. So knowing that we are all one in this all together. This that's yoga. This that's journey. Lovely. Mm -hmm. I love it. All one. And so, what does the word moksha actually mean? Moksha means freedom or liberty. So, um, freedom of self, freedom of, of uh, voice, freedom of choice, uh, freedom of of the actions and words we speak. I love yeah. this. Oh my gosh. So it's it's uh, freedom and joining together. Freedom Let's do and it. Joining Let's and join love it together. And peace and. All those good things. <laughs> it's beautiful. I'm like raring to go. Show oh, me something, yes. show me something yogic. I know it. I'm barefoot. It's like this is the best day ever. All right. Super. What should I do? Yoga always makes you happy. It's true. Um, let's start off with um, Ukutasana, powerful pose. Kay. So a moksha Ukutasana. So feet are about hip distance apart. Okay. Excellent. You want to make sure that um, your toes are facing completely forward. Okay. So I, like in, as a kind of rule of thumb, the center of your heel with the line of your second big toe. Right. Super, your knees are gonna track over the second big toe as well. Kay. So let's reach the arms towards each other. We're gonna even touch our fingertips Hello. right now. Straight line from your shoulders to your fingertips. Draw the belly in towards the spine. And now imagine somebody's grabbing you by the hips and sit back into a little chair. Yeah, eventually coming into like baby bear's little chair. Okay. Perfect, and you wanna make sure that you keep the space between, there you go, okay. excellent. Take a deep breath, draw the belly in, and come down a little bit lower. There you go. Mm -hmm. Weights back into the heels, nice and heavy. Okay. And just careful again with the knees. Imagine you're squeezing a block between the thighs, so there's a little bit of space. Okay. Knees are tracking over the toe. Hearts open. Mm -hmm. And there's a straight line from the top of the head all the way out through the tailbone. How's Almost that? like you're balancing um, a broomstick on your, on your spine. Okay. And careful you don't fall forward. Take a deep breath. Come down a little bit lower for the final three. Watch your knees. Two. <laughs> and one. Draw through the heels. Come all the way up. And exhale, slowly release. Oh, I love it. Yeah, so that's our powerful pose, building strength in the legs. It's one of uh, the poses in the Moksha series. That's great. Yeah. Do you want to tell us maybe a little bit about the Speak Your Peace campaign? What exactly is it? What does it mean to speak your peace? Um, well, your Speak Your Peace campaign is one of our, our Moksha-wide um, awareness campaigns. And it um, basically encourages all of us to reflect on what peace means to us. What does it mean on a personal level? What does it mean on an environmental level? What does it mean within our communities? And so we're asking our students, and when we talk about our students, um, we mean all of those that come into our, um, to our studios to, in the practice room. So we're all students. We are our sixth pillar in the Moksha, uh, Moksha series, uh, Live to Learn. We're students of life, constantly learning, and our students come to reflect on on what peace means to them in that in that perspective. Oh, that's beautiful. Mm. That's great. So many of these concepts are so they're so freeing and lovely and and sort of zen. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And this year, um, uh, so during the Speak Your Peace um, campaign, we have an opportunity to reflect on what peace means to us. We also um, donate two months of our karma funds mm -hmm. to um, um, a charity or nonprofit organization that uh, speaks to peaceful initiatives. And we have also um, an online interaction. So if you haven't visited yet, please, um, you know, poke yourself on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and um, 
we encourage you to reflect on what peace means to you. Hashtag speak your peace. So go for that. Love it. MokshaYoga.com yeah. is the site. All right, I'm ready for another pose. What should okay. we do, Dorian? Let's do it. We're going to go. Um, why don't we go into um, prayer twist? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, let's do some prayer twist. I love it. So come from here. Let's bring okay. our uh, big toes together, heels slightly apart. Okay. Okay, so we always find our foundation down through the feet. So think of um, building the foundation from the structure of the ground up. The triangle is the strongest base of support. So through the big toe, the baby toe, and the center of the heel. Okay. So if you root down through those three points, you'll find nice and strength grounded so that the legs are nice and strong. Let's bring our hands to heart center. Well, let's face each other, shall we? Okay. So take a deep breath. No, oh, when like we this. do this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Take a deep breath. Inhale, lengthen. Draw the weight back into the heels as you sit back into a big chair. So it's again like a little ukatasana. Mm -hmm. Squeeze the knees together. One mm -hmm. day having your glutes even lower than your knees if possible. Oh, what? And now let's, twi <laughs> <laughs> let's twist towards each other. Okay. Hooking the elbow against the other side of the thigh. Okay. Great. So take a deep breath. Find the length of the spine. And as you exhale, draw the thumbs to the center of the heart. Gently offering the right ribs through that little hole you've created. So you're getting a nice twist. One day maybe looking up towards the sky. Really rinsing out the internal organs here. That is such a Waking nice up our uh, digestion. And you just want to be careful with your knees. So you want to glue your knees together, offering the hip, one hip, yep. Right hip forward, left hip forward, oh, right hip yep. back. There you go. You feel that? Yeah. So you get a greater <laughs> twist. Draw the belly in, uh -huh. twist a little higher, and then gently unravel. Look back towards the toes. Inhale, lengthen nice and tall. And exhale, release. We come usually back into Tadasana, mountain pose, nice and tall. Oh, like this. Like this? Yeah. Like this. Great. Or like this, it doesn't matter. Or yeah. like this. Anyway. And finding space, finding silence between each pose so you can just feel what it's done in your body before you continue with your practice to another side. That's yeah. lovely. Let's do one more. Sure. Do you want to do that on the other side to kind of balance yeah, it out? Let's do something different. Okay. Let's go into... Um, I'll be crooked for the rest of the day, but it'll be okay. <laughs> Since we're facing forward, why don't we go into crescent moon? So okay. let's inhale, arms rise up. Okay. And just interlace the fingertips mm -hmm. and try to squeeze the air out of the palms. Okay. That's it. So you're going to find nice deep length here. Relax the shoulders. Okay. Relax your jaw. Nice strong legs. Mm -hmm. Take an inhale lifting up and then exhale slowly come up and over towards the right hand side. Excellent. Without collapsing on the right side. Oh, keep nice strong legs. Mm. There you are. So take a deep breath into the left ribs. Almost like you're blowing up a balloon in your ribs. Finding space between all of the rib muscles, the intercostal muscles. So you're finding breath and space here. As you exhale, you're rooting down through the outside of the left foot. So you're finding this gorgeous arch yeah. all the way around without collapsing the right ribs. So imagine you're coming up and over the biggest beach ball you've ever mm. seen in your life. Both shoulders facing forward That's... and keeping a space between the chin and the chest about the size <laughs> of an apple. And gently coming back up. Oh, lovely. That's a nice exhale. stretch. That feels great. Uh -huh. You're going to have to later up. balance yourself I up. I will. I'll do, do both sides, sides or else I'm just going to be like, hey. You walk out a little crooked <laughs> otherwise. <laughs> you want to make sure you balance one side with the next. We never want to leave you unbalanced on the way out of yoga. I promise I will do it. Can you tell us really quickly about the candlelight classes? Yeah, so this year we partnered up with um, Amnesty International because we really believe in um, what they do of creating peace in the world. And um, Amnesty International is um, the largest human rights organization in the world with over three million people dedicated to, to protecting human rights. Um, and this um, Saturday, September, um, September 21st, 21st yep. is, um, it just co um, culminates, it's like the end of the Speak Your Peace campaign. And uh, each, uh, there's over 60 Moksha studios that are participating or hosting a candlelight um, yoga class where all, those, all the funds will go directly to Amnesty International in addition to the karma funds that are being there. That's so great. We, yeah, so we encourage you to visit a Moksha studio near you. Thanks so much, Dorian. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. So if you're interested in taking this candlelight class or any other classes at Moksha Yoga, check out mokshayoga.ca. Thank you so much for joining us. That yeah, was great. Yeah, wishing you peace in all ways. Thank sure. you. Now when we come back, practical ways that we can reduce the burden of a chronic illness right here on Daytime. Thank you so much.
right, I'm here right now with Raheem Ismail. He's a pharmacist at Shoppers Drug Mart and an owner of Shoppers Drug Mart. Thanks so much for joining us, Raheem. Thank you. Now, you're here to talk to us today about how Canadians can speak to their pharmacist to lessen the burden of chronic illness and maybe use their, their pharmacist as a, a source of more of their health care? Absolutely. Um, Shoppers Drug Mart actually recently re released a report, and it's called the Sustainable Solutions Report. And the report uh, discusses practical ways that we can reduce the burden of chronic illness on the healthcare system, saving billions of dollars um, simply by using the expertise of the pharmacist. Now, currently, the report focused mainly on chronic disease simply because 40% of Canadians each year are affected by some type of chronic disease. These are things like diabetes, cancer, COPD, arthritis, and uh, chronic disease is a factor in almost 70% of deaths each year as well. Wow. Yeah, it's a staggering number. In 2011, the Canadian government spent $42 billion just on dealing with chronic disease management, and that's 21% of the overall health care budget. Oh, wow. And by next year, 2015, that number is expected to grow to $53 billion. Wow, and as our population ages, I'm sure that will only continue to get absolutely, higher and higher. Absolutely, absolutely, and that's what we're seeing. So the report made three recommendations, and um, it showed a potential savings of anywhere from $1.5 to $2 billion in health care savings over the next three years, which equates to 1.3 million ER visits. 600,000 hospitalizations and saving up to 6.3 million hours of physician time. Wow. So there's a considerable, considerable amount of savings here that we're, we're talking about. So they discussed three different recommendations. The first was allowing pharmacists to develop and manage patient care plans. Um, and this is already happening in some parts of the country, but we're looking for a more formalized process to ensure accessibility and consistency for all Canadians mm -hmm. as well. Um, now, these management of the plans could involve a semi-annual or annual consultation with your pharmacist, and this could be done in a group or in a one-on-one -on -one session where you could talk about symptoms you might be experiencing, side effects of any medications you might be taking, as well as discuss different lifestyle tips. And the, it, this would also provide a, a really good opportunity for the pharmacist to be proactive in terms of ensuring that you're taking your medications the way that they were prescribed. Now, shoppers already um, Sorry, Sharpers Drug Mart already um, um, offers a number of support programs for people dealing with chronic illnesses, but there is an opportunity to develop more programs and make them more widely available. So one of the tools we actually released just last week was the arthritis screening tool. Mm -hmm. And the arthritis screening tool is a self-directed joint exam and questionnaire, which you can complete online at, on our website, or you can do it with a pharmacist as well. And the questionnaire allows you to detect the disease early on. For those who are already suffering and dealing with, the, with arthritis, it allows them to manage and track the disease with their pharmacist, preventing it from worsening over time as well. Right, so I guess that would prevent the strain on your family doctor if you're always going back for the same condition. Some of that can be taken, that load can be taken by the pharmacist. Absolutely. And then also if you can manage the condition better, I guess that would probably mean fewer ER visits. Absolutely, absolutely. So it's, it's really, it's saving, it's saving the healthcare system for the entire country and making the healthcare maybe wait times and burden less for all Canadians, but also for the individual. It seems like it would be easier to go see your pharmacist regularly than to have to go to the emergency room or always be making appointments with your family doctor. Mm -hmm. Pharmacists are uniquely positioned and very convenient to access, um, but we're not there to replace a family physician, but there to work with them to reduce that burden of chronic illnesses. And that sort of leads into the second recommendation that the report made, and that was to allow pharmacists to renew and adapt prescriptions. The study found that approximately 5% of all hospital admissions were due to uh, patients not taking their medications as prescribed. And by allowing pharmacists to renew and adapt these prescriptions, it would allow patients to continue on their medications and maintain the way that they were intended to be taken, and that would free up valuable physician time, sort of what you, what you just spoke to as well. Right, that sounds great. Okay, so those are two good ones so far. What's the third recommendation? The third one calls on the government to really develop a stronger IT infrastructure and information sharing pathway to allow pharmacists and physicians to communicate better. And as we're dealing with more patients with chronic, uh, chronic conditions, we want a way to be able to communicate better with the physicians and allow us to update them on the, con the status of their, uh, of their patients' conditions. That's great. So now if I have a chronic condition and I want to bring my pharmacist maybe more into my treatment, what's a couple of quick things I can do or resources that I can use? The first thing I definitely suggest is you speaking directly with them, um, letting them know 
uh, what you're looking for, what you're potentially dealing with, and also make sure that your family physician is in the loop, um, and that way you can create a, a triangle um, so you have the, your doctor, your pharmacist, and yourself as well, too, all on the same page. That sounds great, Raheem. Thank you so much for coming in today and for, for outlining that for us. Those three recommendations sound really practical and something that I think will suit a lot of people's lifestyles. It's been great, great to talk to you. Thank you. Thanks. Now, if you want more information, check out www.shoppersdrugmart.com. Right there, there's the site. Boink. And after the break, we're going to choose the right technology for studying with organizational expert Claire Kumar right here on Daytime. I'm very excited because I never know what gadget, what app, how to be more productive. I'm going to find out right here. Stay tuned. It's going to be very exciting and we're going to be organized. We're going to be zen. It's going to be like time management from a yogic perspective on Daytime. All right, so here we are with organizational expert Claire Kumar. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, it's my pleasure to be here. I'm Absolutely. happy to have you. Now, okay, so it's back to school for a lot of people out there. Mm -hmm. and you have the cutest little laptop I've ever seen right here. It's absolutely adorable. Can you talk to us a little bit about some of the gadgets and productivity applications that we can be trying to use to help manage our time better? You bet. I mean, as students, they're juggling a heavy course load, often um, juggling a job, and often figuring out how to live. So there's a lot on their place. They really need to be productive. So I've got actually two things I want to talk about. One is the technology and the equipment and the tools that students need. And I also want to spend some time talking about time management a little bit and how to do that with technology because Intel Canada just recently did a study and they did they studied uh, surveyed 500 more than 500 um, high school and university students and would you know that if you're asking a post-secondary student what they would tell their high school selves they need to be successful it's time management and self-discipline Wow, yeah. I feel like adult Nicole yeah. would tell adult Nicole those same two things. <laughs> you, you, it's not, yeah. Nicole. This is not just for <laughs> students, actually. This is, these are really good tips for everybody, but yeah. focusing on students Great. for sure. So if I want to talk about technology, right now it's pretty daunting. There's a lot out there on the market, and how do you know what you need, right, in terms of processing power and um, applications? What do, you, what do you want to get? Mm -hmm. So I, I wanted to highlight for everybody a website which is really going to help simpl simplify the computer that you might want to buy. Mm -hmm. It's called PC Matchmaker. Okay. And it takes you very easily through a little questionnaire right online. And it'll ask you, you know, do you want to play videos? Do you want to, hopefully there's more than videos going on. Do you want to um, manage your email, edit photos? Are you working in regular office type documents? What are you doing? That's going to give um, one set of information that they're going to use to help figure out what you need. You can also add in things like what kind of battery life are you looking for? How portable does it need to be through your day? Um, and then also you put in your budget and then it'll kick out for you recommendations for um, computers uh, that are actually in market now at a number of different retailers. So oh, it's really helpful. That, that sounds tool. great. It's, like, yeah. it's almost like, uh, you know, online dating to match the person <laughs> and it the makes machine. It makes easy. <laughs> yeah, as an organizer, if I'm, if I'm planning a space, I always start with what do you want to do. Yeah. So this is a great way to do it and, and a helpful tool for you to just narrow down what am I looking for. Sure. Right? With your budget respected, which I really like that, that point. That sounds great. So PC yeah. Matchmaker is what it's called. PC Matchmaker.ca. Easy okay. to find. Great. Um, and then I brought an example because now there's a big uh, question, is it a tablet do I want or do I want a computer? And there are nice combo offerings on the market now and I brought one to show you. Okay. This is the Microsoft Surface. Pro. And um, you can see it's really um, a small scale, so yeah, it's, it's really, tiny. really portable. If you want it, you can lift that. Can I? You want, yeah. yeah. Can you feel that? Oh my gosh, it's so light. It's like, it's two pounds. Wow. Right? So that's where we're closer to tablet territory. I'll yeah. give you a couple of other tablet features. Okay. It's This is a touch screen Ooh. and it's got a stylus so we can actually jot notes on there if we're, if we're if handwriting is our preferred method of entry. This keyboard actually comes right off. It snaps right on and oh, off. Wow. I can show that too. Yeah, it's really... Okay. Like it just pulls off what? and off. And there's a magnet. Like, oh my gosh. It, isn't that cool? Ah, that's that's great. cool. We live in and, the future. Yeah, and this back just flips out and tucks away. So oh. if you want, you want to use it as a tablet on your lap, you're laughing, right? That's great. But the computing side of this is this is a computer. It has the Intel iCore, um, the i5 core processor in here, and it also has four gigs of RAM. So it's actually going to Multi multitask for you, which is okay in a computing environment, not when you're driving. <laughs> this is good for computing. Don't it's, try this in the car, folks. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's fantastic because it's a really robust yet portable light system. So sure. I wanted to I wanted to show to show that. 
Um, can we talk about time management? Can we please? Let's yeah. manage our time so that we have time to talk about time management. Oh, Claire, I, take it away. Exactly. <laughs> so time management, I, there's three tools that I think are really critical for any successful time management um, system. Number one is you've got to figure out all of the commitments that you have. So it's your to-do list, your task list. And what's interesting as part of this study too, um, they found that um, the number of people using technology to now manage their tasks has grown from 18% in high school up to 50% in university. Wow. So if you're going to have a system that's going to work, you're going to have it with you. So portability is key and it's also something that turns on and off very quickly so you can actually get into it and write down um, your next thing that you want to add to your list. Definitely. If you can't, <laughs> right, it's going to slow you down, you're going to think you're going to do it later, you're going to forget, and yeah. then something will fall through the cracks, right? Great. So the, the task list is really important. There's, there's a lot of um, applications online, lots too many to mention here, but there's some really good apps online as well for managing, helping you manage your task list if you're looking for one. The next thing, um, which is really important, is calendar. So a calendar system, again, that's with you, that you can use, and if you're if you if you're with paper um, and you're thinking of the move to technology, but it's been difficult, the tablet and the ability to start um, your technology and get it up and running quickly that might unlock time management for you on the go. Because what I like about the larger screens with a phone, it's pretty small. You see a dot, and you go, okay, I have something yeah. on September 19th, but I don't know what that is, right? Mm -hmm. But with a tablet, you get a week or a month view. And you can get, it's because time is abstract. That's so good, it gives yeah. you perspective. So you're, when That's you're looking right. at today, you're also sort of in the corner of your eye seeing what's happening next month. Well, or that even the week view. Like, right. I, I really say every Sunday, scan your week, know what's coming up, so you're not you're not hit by the nine o'clock <laughs> class on Thursday and you went out late on Wednesday and you didn't see it coming, right? Totally. Um, so your week view and your month view are really helpful tools, and the technology then helps you have that easily at your fingertips, and then have it on your phone when you have your phone with you, have it on your tablet when you have your tablet with you or your computer. Yeah, right? and that actually is probably a great tip is to maybe think about using a slightly bigger screen. That's right. Because that way That's you right. are seeing more days at a time and more commitments at a time. That's so right. you're able to keep abreast of more things. Because, yeah, sometimes I use my smartphone and then it's sort of like, what? Like, yeah, like, so for, for different <laughs> for applications. Telescope, like, yeah, if you've that? got a calendar system you can access from both, you're really, that's when it really works for you. So you'll always have it with you. The last part of the time management system is a reminder system. Because even if you've planned it, you could still forget. So you want a little jolt in your day to do that. Yeah. That is great. I yeah. need a little ping and yeah. then a screen to look yeah. at. And I want to carry it all with me. This is perfect. Thank you so much for joining us, Claire. Oh, you're welcome. That was great. And I have to say, you managed your time very well. Managed to speak about many things. <laughs> in a short period of time. You are a pro. <laughs> Thank you. If you want more information, check out streamlife.ca and pcmatchmaker.ca. Now here comes Danya. She's one of our volunteers and she's going to tell you our community events for the day. Hi, I'm Danya and here are your community event listings. Do you know a boy or girl ages seven and up who likes to sing? The Kingsway Conservatory of Music is holding an open rehearsal this Wednesday evening. Experience the excitement of this unique choral program encompassing vocal technique, singing skills, choreography, and weekly drum circle. To find out more, go to kingswayconservatory.ca. Relive the summer through your stories. Share your stories of camp, vacations, romance, and all the things that make summer great. Treat yourself to a mini vacation and enjoy stories and summer-themed refreshments. Storytelling for Adults takes place tonight at Eatonville Library starting at 6.30 p.m. For details, head to torontopubliclibrary.ca. Attend the North York Senior Centre Active Living Fair and Open House for tours, seminars, consultations and live demonstrations from more than 50 exhibitors. The event is designed to help boomers and senior aged people in North York access the appropriate programs and services to stay at home and live healthy healthy while living productive lives. It's a multicultural celebration with Russian, Farsi, Korean, Cantonese and Mandarin language interpreters available to make sure everyone feels included. Drop by tomorrow between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. to enjoy free refreshments, door prizes and membership discounts. For more information call 416-733-4111 or click nyseniors.org. And there are your community events for Wednesday, September 18th. Now, back to the studio. Thank you so much, Danya. That was great. I feel like Danya and I are kind of hair twins. Do you see it? Maybe a little? All right, coming up on tomorrow's show for Thursday, we are going to talk about providing support for the aging population with an organization called TransCare. 
Then we're going to head into the kitchen with Morton's The Steakhouse. I'm hoping they bring me some beef. Fingers are crossed for that. We're going to learn all about the latest show on Rogers TV. It's called Toronto Boomers Being Fabulous Over 50. The latest gadget with the Rogers Data Guy. And learn about adult day program with Providence Healthcare. It's going to be an amazing day. My name is Nicole Stamp. Please tune in tomorrow and join us right here on Rogers for all of that fun daytime Toronto action. I am really hoping they bring me some beef. I really am. That's like a, a wish and a prayer in my heart every day. <laughs> Thank you everybody for joining us. My name is Nicole Stamp.